Thank you for the introduction. Um, so this is joint work with uh, Zvika Parkeski and uh, Christina Bruska. And when you're talking about statistically secure obfuscation with approximate correctness, the first obvious question is, what is statistically secure obfuscation? And as a very short reminder, an obfuscator is basically just a program that gets as input a circuit C and probably some randomness, and it outputs another circuit C prime. And what you would usually want is perfect correctness, meaning that um, the output circuit should be functionally equivalent to the input circuit. However, we can um, sometimes get away with much weaker definitions. Uh, what we are going with is approximate correctness. Approximate correctness basically means that for a random input, the output circuit must uh, agree with the input circuit with probability at least one minus epsilon for some function epsilon that basically describes the approximation error of the uh, obfuscator. The second thing we want from uh, our obfuscator is of course that it's secure. And what you would usually go with is indistinguishability obfuscation. And in the statistical sense, indistinguishability obfuscation simply means that the, uh, if you have two circuits that are functionally equivalent and have the same size, then their statistical distance, the, or the statistical distance of their obfuscations, must be negligible. However, we can also weaken this definition to something that we in our paper call correlation obfuscation. And there, the difference is that we no longer uh, want that the uh, statistical distance is necessarily bounded by a negligible function. Instead, it's enough that we know some function delta that bounds this statistical distance. For the main part of my talk, I will actually focus on indistinguishability obfuscators simply to keep things a bit simpler. Um, but I will mention how our result also applies to correlation obfuscators. So the next obvious question might be uh, why we even care about approximate correctness. Uh, because an approximately correct uh, obfuscator might seem like a relatively useful thing. It does not even guarantee that it is uh, correct on any fixed input. Um, however, it turns out that it is, in fact, still useful. In particular, it was observed by uh, Mahmoudi, Mohamed, Nematihachi, uh, Pass, and Shilat that you can still construct uh, public key encryption from one-way functions if you have statistically secure I.O., uh, approximate I.O. And uh, this is basically done by just applying the construction of Zahai and Waters that usually constructs public key encryption from one-way functions and I.O. to an approximate I.O., and then you get something that you can amplify using an amplification technique due to Hohenstein to a full public key encryption scheme. And in our paper, we show with a careful analysis that this is not only true for um, statistically secure approximate I.O., but this is even true for correlation obfuscation for everything, for all the parameters basically in uh, this blue area here. So that means that even correlation obfuscation is still an interesting primitive and it's a very interesting question to ask whether it might exist, especially in this region, for, um, with statistical security, because it would lead to a major breakthrough in crypto, giving you public key encryption from one-way functions. And our answer to that question is mainly negative. What we show is that if a statistically secure, approximately correct I.O. would exist, then either one-way functions do not exist or the polynomial hierarchy collapses. And since we do not believe that either one-way functions do not exist or the polynomial hierarchy collapses, probably statistically secure approximate I.O. does not exist. Our actual proof is more general in that it also applies to correlation obfuscation, and it basically gives us a lower bound on the possible parameters for statistically correct, um, uh, statistically secure, approximately correct correlation obfuscation. However, for correlation obfuscation, we also have a positive result where we can, for very weak parameters, uh, give a trivial construction. Um, and this gives us this um, landscape of correlation obfuscation where in the upper right we have a large area that where we actually know a trivial construction. However, the construction is actually so trivial that we are pretty certain that it is completely useless. On the other hand, we have down here the uh, red range. In this range, we cannot construct um, correlation obfuscation with statistical uh, security um, unless the polynomial hierarchy collapses or one-way functions do not exist. However, I need to mention that we cannot rule out the full range of parameters that are actually useful for the 
transformation to public key encryption. So how does our proof work? Um, basically, our, the starting point for our proof is a previous proof by uh, Goldwasser and Rothblum. And what they showed was the impossibility of statistically secure uh, I.O. with perfect correctness. And they also rely on the assumption that the um, polynomial hierarchy does not collapse. And what they do is basically show how a statistically secure obfuscator would help you in solving SAT. So the SAT problem is that you uh, you're given a formula, it's either unsatisfiable or satisfiable, and you have to decide which one it is. And to be able to use our, an obfuscator to do that, um, we look at another formula. The formula zero is some canonical unsatisfiable formula. Doesn't matter what it is, just we know this formula is unsatisfiable. And now we obfuscate all of these formulae. And what we get is that because the two unsatisfiable formulae are functionally equivalent, the security of the obfuscator guarantees us that the output distributions must be negligibly close. On the other hand, if we have a satisfiable formula, then by definition, this formula is not uh, functionally equivalent to a zero circuit because there exists at least one point on which it actually outputs one. And because you have perfect correctness in the obfuscator, this means that the output distributions are actually completely disjoint. And now it turns out that the problem of deciding whether two distributions are either very close statistically or very far, this is called the gap statistical distance problem. And it was proven by Zahai and Vadan that this problem is a, actually in AM intersect CoAM, which would mean that we can decide SAT in AM intersect CoAM, which would imply a collapse of the polynomial hierarchy. So um, the next obvious question is, of course, can we just use exactly the same approach in the approximate case? And the answer is no. And to see why, just consider that we have a satisfiable formula that has very few satisfying assignments. Let's say it only has a single satisfying assignment, then it actually disagrees with the zero circuit only on a single point. And because we only have an approximate obfuscator, the obfuscator can just ignore that point uh, obfuscate this satisfiable formula to a zero circuit, and therefore we uh, no longer have the guarantee that there will be a large statistical distance. So how do we solve this problem? Our approach is basically um, to obfuscate more complicated circuits. And for this, we construct two different circuits. We construct a reference circuit CY and a circuit CX that's indexed with a PRF key and a formula psi. And we construct these circuits in such a way that if the formula psi is unsatisfiable, then the two circuits are functionally equivalent, and the output distributions are once again uh, negligibly close. On the other hand, if psi is satisfiable, then the two circuits are almost functionally equivalent. However, there exists a point we call x0 on which they disagree. Now, this may seem confusing because I just spent some time arguing that if you have two circuits that only disagree on a single point, an obfuscator might choose to ignore that point. And that is why we basically have to hide whether this point exists or not. So to do this, uh, to do this we introduce another circuit C. And this circuit uh, is constructed in such a way that it is um, functionally equivalent to the reference circuit. However, the obfuscator cannot actually distinguish between the circuit CX and the circuit C, and this allows us to, um, uh, to ensure that the, while the distributions are no longer completely disjoint, that the statistical distance is large. And to be able to do this, we leverage the fact that the obfuscator is actually an efficient algorithm, even though it must be uh, statistically secure, it must itself be an efficient algorithm to be useful. And so we leverage here our assumption that one-way functions exist. And this assumption is leveraged in the form of punctual pseudorandom functions. And um, punctual pseudorandom functions were shown by uh, Bonnet Waters, um, Boyle, Goldwasser, Ivan, uh, and Kiayas, Papadopoulos, Triadopoulos, and Zacharias, basically concurrently to be existentially equivalent to one-way functions. And we use a very simple notion of uh, punctual PRFs here, where we have uh, two algorithms. Um, we have a PRF algorithm that um, 
on input a key and an input value outputs a single bit. And we have a puncture algorithm that on input a key and a value x0 outputs a punctured key. And we want two things from a punctual PRF. First of all, functionality should be preserved under puncturing, meaning that for all inputs that are not x0, it makes no difference whether you use the punctured key or the normal key. Second thing is, of course, security. And security for the punctual PRF is defined as follows. You have the attacker. The attacker may choose a point x0 on which we should puncture the key. We choose a key k. We puncture that key on x0. And then we have two cases. Either we give the attacker the punctured key and uh, the actual uh, PRF value on x0, or we give the attacker um, or we give the attacker the punctured key and a random bit b. And the security states that the two cases should be indistinguishable. So how can we use this to ensure that two circuits that, are, um, that only differ on a single point are obfuscated in such a way that the, the statistical distance is large? And to see this, we first look at this circuit. This circuit is for now not indexed by a formula. Instead, we have a punctured key k star here, a in value x0 on which the key is punctured, and a bit b. And what the circuit does is, on x0, it simply outputs b. On all other values, it outputs the PRF circuit, uh, the, the PRF value. And we can see that uh, if b is not the PRF value, so our PF only outputs a single bit, so this means it's simply the PRF value x01 then this circuit disagrees with the PRF circuit on exactly a single point, on exactly x0. And what we want to show is that the obfuscation of this circuit is nevertheless statistically far from an obfuscation of the PRF circuit. And to do this, we look at the other case. We look at the case where b is actually the PRF value. In this case, we have that this circuit is functionally equivalent to the PRF circuit. And this has an interesting implication. Because if we obfuscate the PRF circuit, then we guarantee by the approximate correctness that on x0, the obfuscated circuit will output b, because b is the actual PRF value. Uh, and it will output this with probability at least 1 minus epsilon. However, because the two circuits are functionally equivalent, um, we have basically this bound carries over to this case minus some negligible loss. And now we uh, can leverage the fact that the attacker, uh, the, the obfuscator, is actually uh, an efficient algorithm and use the PRF security because the obfuscator is actually not able to distinguish between the two different cases because this is exactly the security of the punctual PRF. So this bound also, minus again some negligible loss, carries over to this case. And this means what we have is that if we would obfuscate the PRF circuit, then the PRF circuit outputs the correct PRF value on x0 with probability at least 1 minus epsilon. Whereas the obfuscated circuit C disagrees with the PRF circuit on x0 with probability roughly 1 minus epsilon, giving us a statistical distance of roughly 1 minus 2 epsilon. And therefore, we have enforced a large statistical distance, even though the two circuits disagree only on a single point. Now, of course, what's missing here is still that we have to somehow put our formula into this. And to be able to do this, we actually have to restrict our attention to unique SAT. So unique SAT is exactly the same thing as SAT, except that you're guaranteed that any satisfiable formula has only a single satisfying assignment. Now, unique SAT was shown to be uh, NP-hard uh, by uh, Valiant and uh, Vazirani. However, only via a randomized reduction. And that's a problem because we can't use the exact same approach as um, Goldwasser and Rotblum, because um, if we would show that unique SAD is in AM intersect co-AM, this would not directly apply, uh, imply that uh, SAD is also in AM intersect co-AM. However, we can uh, combine previous results due to Mahmoudi and Xiao and Bogdanov and Li to show that it's enough to prove that unique SAD can be solved if we are given a gap statistical distance oracle, then uh, this implies that Z is in AM intersect co-AM and the polynomial hierarchy collapses. So this is what we're doing. We are showing that unique Z can be decided if we have a gap statistical distance oracle. So to do this, we are looking at this circuit here. 
This circuit CX is indexed with a key K, a random value S, and a formula Psi. And what it does is it simply checks whether the input value X or S satisfies the formula. And if it does, it outputs the opposite of the PRF value. And otherwise, it simply evaluates the PRF. Now, there are obviously two cases here. Either Psi is uniquely satisfiable or Psi is unsatisfiable. Now, if Psi is unsatisfiable, then this circuit is functionally equivalent to the PRF because, well, this is simply never true because there is no satisfying assignment. In, on the other hand, in the uniquely satisfiable case, what we have is that um, CX is actually functionally equivalent to the circuit C we saw on the previous slide for X0 being the satisfying assignment of the formula X or S. And this is where the S is important because we need that this value X0 is uniformly distributed. Otherwise, the approximate correctness of the obfuscation scheme does not apply. And of course, B is here not the PRF value, but the opposite. And what that means is, what that, means is that um, if we define these two distributions here, uh, that basically only differ in that one distribution obfuscates the circuit CX and the other one obfuscates the PRF circuit, then in the, unique, uh, in the unsatisfiable case, we have that the two circuits are functionally equivalent, meaning that the statistical distance between their obfuscations is negligible. On the other hand, in the uniquely satisfiable case, this circuit, as I said, is functionally equivalent to the circuit C we saw on the previous slide. And what that means is that our bound basically carries over again to this case minus again some negligible loss, meaning that we can bound this uh, statistical distance with roughly one minus two epsilon. And this gives us a uh, gap between the two cases. And this means, and this gap is large enough that we can decide in which case we're in given a gap statistical distance uh, oracle. And that means that if SAIO and one-way functions both exist, then uh, the polynomial hierarchy collapses. And this concludes our proof. And if we apply exactly the same proof um, and are very careful uh, to correlation obfuscation, then we basically end up with this uh, lower bound that I showed before. And I can leave you with the interesting open question whether this bound can actually be extended to also rule out this interesting region here, or if there's a reason why we can't rule out this region, because maybe an obfuscator in this region actually exists, which would, as I said, lead to a major breakthrough in crypto. And with that, I'd like to thank you. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them.